So look at, let's look at more examples of computing x and y intercepts of graphs. So I'm looking at page 63 of section 1.1. Let's look at something like 36. We're supposed to find the x-intercepts of the following equation. x equals y squared minus 5y plus 6. Now, we start off by finding the x-intercepts. So to find x-intercepts, we set y equal to 0 and solve for x. So we have that x equals 0 squared minus 5 times 0 plus 6. So 0 squared is just 0, 5 times 0 is just 0, plus 6, 0 minus 0 is 0, and 0 plus 6 is just 6. So we have x equals 6, which means this is the x-intercept, where y equals 0, x equals 6. This is the only place where it hits the x-axis, where this, the graph of this equation will hit, run through this point, which happens to be on the x-axis. For the y-intercept, we're going to set the other variable, x, equal to 0. So setting x equal to 0, the remaining equation is 0 equals y squared minus 5y plus 6. So we haven't quite got into how to solve quadratics quite yet, but some of you may already be familiar with this, that we're going to need to factor this equation in such a way that we're going to need two numbers that multiply to a plus 6 and add to a minus 5. Well, two numbers that multiply to minus, plus 6 and add to minus 5 are going to be minus 3 and minus 2. When we multiply them together, we're going to get 6. And when we add these two together, we'll get negative 5. So this will factor as follows. And if you FOIL or distribute this out, you'll see that once you distribute this, you get back to exactly this. So these two things are indeed the same. Once we have them factored, we can use the property that this is just one number times a second number. And whenever the product of two numbers is zero, the only way that can happen is if one of these two numbers is actually zero. So we say the only way this can happen is if y minus 3 is zero. That's one option, one way this could happen. The only other way this could happen is if y minus 2 was equal to 0. And now this becomes very familiar. Just add 3 to both sides. Here we're going to add 2 to both sides. So we have two y-intercepts. Both will have x equals 0 because they're y-intercepts. And with these two, that's it. These are our y-intercepts, and our x-intercept was the point six zero. And if you're curious, the rough sketch of the graph will look something like this. Five, six. And then on the y, I need to move to 1, 
two, three. So it's going to have, let's see, is that right? Yeah, I think so. So we're going to have a Y intercept at zero, three, another Y intercept at zero, two, and we have an X intercept at the point zero, six. So this graph is going to look something like this. It's kind of a parabola that's been flipped on its side. This is the graph, this is the graphical representation of this equation. And it will be that it hits the y, the graph hits the y-axis at these two points and the x-axis at this point here. So let's take a look at another example. Thirty-eight, which is y equals the square root of nine minus x squared. So to find the x-intercept, and I'll just abbreviate intercept with int, the x-intercept, we're going to set the other variable, y, equal to zero. So with y equal to zero, we have this ugly thing. Well, the first thing I want to do is get rid of the square root, because that's pretty nasty. So if I square both sides, that'll have the effect of getting rid of the square root here. And 0 squared is just 0. So now I can do something like add x squared to both sides, because I don't like negatives. I'd rather see positives. They're easier to write down. If I add x squared to both sides, on the right I just have 9, and on the left I'm going to have x squared. Well now, how do I get rid of a square? Well, it's the opposite way of getting rid of a square root. To The square got rid of the square root, so a square root will get rid of a square. So if we take square roots of both sides, and keep in mind that whenever you take square roots of both sides, you've got to add a plus or minus on one of the two sides. So we have x equals, because the square root and the square cancel, square root of 9 is just 3. So we have that x could be positive 3 or x could be negative 3. And in either case, that's when y is equal to 0. So our x-intercepts are the points plus 3, comma, 0, minus 3, comma, 0. Those are our two x-intercepts. For the y-intercept, we set the other variable, x, equal to 0. So if we set x equal to 0, we get y. We're solving for y and plugging in 0 for x. So 0 squared is just 0. So this is 9 minus 0. Well, 9 minus 0 is just 9. And the square root of 9 is simply 3. So when x is 0, y is 3. So that's the point 0, comma, 3. So these are our x-intercepts, where y is 0, and this is our y-intercept, where x is equal to 0. And again, if you're curious about how this looks, because graphs come in all kinds of weird and funky shapes, this is actually a semicircle with radius 3 and centered at the origin. 
So ignoring my horrible artistic abilities, here's the point three zero. It's on the x-axis and will be on the graph. Here's the point minus three zero, the other x-intercept, and our y-intercept is just moving up three. And the graph will actually look like this. It's just the upper half of a semicircle. This is the graph of y equals square root of 9 minus x squared. Alright, one more quick final example. This is going to illustrate that graphs don't have to have an x-intercept. They don't have to have y-intercepts. Because for the x-intercept, we set y equal to 0 and solve. So we have x times 0 equals 1. Well, x times 0 is just 0. And 0 is clearly not 1. So there are simply no x-intercepts. If y equals to 0, this equation can't be true because we end up with a false statement. So it's never going to be the case that it hits the x-axis. This will never touch the x-axis. So it has no x-intercepts. And similarly, because this is rather symmetric in x and y, you can switch the roles of x and y and still get the same thing. So for the y-intercept, we're going to see that the same thing applies. With x being 0, we get 0 times y, but that's just 0 equals 1, which can't happen. So we have no y-intercept, which is to say that this graph never touches the y-axis. And if you're curious, so our answer is no y-intercept, no x-intercept. If you're curious how this looks, this is the graph of one of y equals 1 over x. And while it may look like I'm touching the x and y axes, these are actually asymptotes, which means to get very close to, but never actually touch. So while at this magnitude it looks like I'm touching the y axis, if we were to zoom in on this graph, there will always be some distance between the graph and the axes. So this graph will never touch the y-axis, and it will never touch the x-axis.